my name is Sydney Olenek. I'm the writer producer of Below Zero. And I'm Bob Schultz. I also am a producer on Below Zero. And we run a company called uh, Man in a Box Productions, where we create low budget horror films in, with very few uh, locations, very few small casts, just isolated claustrophobic thrillers. Thrillers and horrors all around the million dollar budgets. Uh, limited cast, limited special effects, limited locations. And that's what we do. Make the story count. So where did the slaughterhouse idea come from? I had a low budget concept about a guy locked in a meat freezer. And I'd written about 50 pages and then I got the worst case of writer's block I've ever had. I was desperately trying to find a way to turn that concept into a feature length screenplay. And my 50 pages, I could not figure out how to get it to 85 to 110. How did I do that? The only thing I could come up with was to have myself locked in a freezer. So I spent five days in a freezer in northern Alberta, and at the end of that time, I, I merged with Below Zero at my first draft of my script. We shot it in the same location where I wrote it, and it was an amazing experience. We had a, a great cast, and it was fun. How did you guys get uh, Ed involved in did you stick him in a freezer? I mean, <laughs> like... They kidnapped him and yeah, put like, there. We, we told him we were shooting in uh, Hawaii and then surprised him when he got off the plane. <laughs> no, uh, Sydney and I run a screenwriting conference in L.A., the biggest screenwriting conference in L.A., the Great American Pitch Fest, the screenwriting conference, and uh, through that, we have access to a lot of writers, but also agents, managers, production producers, production companies, and so on. And we knew somebody who was maybe four degrees of separation from Eddie. So when we're going out, we were looking to cast the role. People, someone read the script, liked it, passed it along, liked it, passed it along until it got all the way up the ladder to Eddie's representation. And that's that's a key thing. We always tell people make relationships before you need them. And and that was something that was really important to us. We didn't want to make a low budget movie that didn't have anyone who was recognizable in it because you can sell that but it's a much more difficult sell. So we really wanted to make sure that we had recognizable talent in the film, and that was, a, that was one of the things that was driving us in making this. We also wanted to create the, the highest production values that we could. We didn't want this to look like a little low budget indie film. We wanted it to look as, as big studio, like a big studio picture as much as possible. So we worked really hard to try to round, round up um, the resources and the people who could help to, to bring it to that level. So uh, Sydney and I work so much together, maybe we, we write about what we reflect, you know? I write a strong, heroic, zombie-killing woman, and she writes a flawed, <laughs> bad <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> So why you guys like the, the horror industry, you know? Why you are not doing love stories or...? <laughs> Once again, we, we write what we reflect to <laughs> each other. <laughs> we wanted to write movies that we knew we could sell. And what's scary here is scary in Germany and Japan and everywhere else. Where if we focused on, say, a, a coming-of-age story or a comedy, those stories often don't translate into other cultures or other languages even. So to make something as, as commercially viable as possible, we thought it would be wise to just focus on thrillers and horrors. Uh, we don't do any sort of hacker slasher horror films. We're, we're more interested in writing things that we hope are smart and, and challenging to an audience. And they, and they watch and they, they don't just watch a movie, but they walk away and they're, they're thinking about it a bit more. And uh, that was a big part of, of what we are mandated about making these low budget thrillers and horrors. And these are really difficult scripts to write because it's one character, one location, and they're primarily like, how do you make that engaging? How do you make that? compelling to watch that. Um, well, that's the biggest challenge for us as writers, is figuring that out. But I, I think we did, and, and Bob's done it too. We're, we've already started production on Bob's film, which we started shooting about a month ago, and we start our principal in the spring. Yeah, also, horror, horror and sci-fi are the two genres where fans gather together and celebrate their shared love for the genre. Yeah. You don't see romantic comedy conventions. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> you, know, you don't necessarily see period pieces conventions outside of you know medieval fair. But that's not about film, you know. So it's it's the, the avid believers in it are are 
they're our, our audience, and so, it, I, and I'm one of them. I've been a horror sci-fi fan ever since I can remember, so it's, it's good to have a, a large potential audience who are willing to take a chance on a new film in their genre based on the fact that we treat them with respect. I mean, the upside is they gather together and they're believers in it. The downside is fans of horror and sci-fi know when they're being bullshitted. <laughs> so it, so you, we have we have to keep them in mind when we're making it. Say we need to make a movie that we like with respect to the fans, and we have. And uh, but it, it's it helps us to know that we had we can. Michael Behrman goes to conventions and talks to the audience. If we made a romantic comedy, first of all, those are very difficult to sell without a big name star from untried filmmakers, and. Uh, we don't. We wouldn't have anyone on that grassroots level going out there and saying you need to see this movie. And there wouldn't be a medium for anyone to do that if they wanted to. So it's a smart business move. It's also a great philosophical move. I mean, fear is one of the fundamental survival emotions that all humans share. Yeah. It's it's very difficult and it, it's very frustrating too when you you just can't find people who necessarily care about something the way. You and if you want to do something in your life, you're the one who has to be the driving force behind making that happen. So that's a lesson we learned a long time ago. And, and you know, Bob and I think very differently, but we also... No, we don't. Yes, we do. We, we do not. <laughs> we fight about everything. Uh -huh. We fight about everything. But the good news is that we're on the same team, and we know that. And our arguments, our disagreements, they help us to come up with something stronger. And the great thing is I, I don't want someone at my side who thinks exactly like me because then I'm not really, I'm just going to get someone echoing back what I already know or what I believe. And instead, we challenge each other and, and I think that helps us to come up with something better. Perfecto. a ver, bajo cero. Perfecto. Gracias. Perfecto, gracias. Yeah.